antennas are everywhere. So as we talked about different uh, different industry set, uh, setups are being present. So in our last presentation also, we were, we were talking about different industries which work out with different types of antenna systems. So overall, when we talk about antennas that are present everywhere in all, almost all the industries, there are different types of antennas which are being used for specific applications in those industries. So this is something which we have been talking about for the last three days, the, the physics that has been underlying physics for entire setup. So predominantly it's being the Maxwell's equation, most on the differential as well as the integral equation part of it. So whenever we are solving any particular setup, the boundary conditions of a particular problem is very much important to solve that setup. And when we talk about the analytical solutions that are being present with the problem at hand, it is easier to apply for a smaller set of conditions, but it becomes more complex when this problem itself is entirely complex. So I'm not going to go delve deep into these particular setups because we already discussed on these points. So. So when we talk about solving a Maxwell's equation, as we are all aware of, first initially your electric, that is your current field density is being calculated and further down the line your electric and your magnetic fields are getting calculated. So both of your vector potential in terms of like every, uh, each and every point of it and each and every mesh based upon your different discretization of your frequency, it is getting calculated throughout the setup. So two of the most important points in this particular setup, as you are aware of the boundary conditions that are being applied onto the solutions and the tool itself takes care of these boundary conditions when uh, when we are taking on took account of different concepts that are being pulled into setup. So mostly the way the antenna is present, that is the surroundings of your antenna system is very much important to analyze the effectiveness of your antenna system that is also being present. So just quickly, uh, we just a quick recap on the computational electromagnetic solutions that are being available in the overall setup. So when we talk about the computer modeling of your, for your simulation scenarios, all the components that you are going to develop or all the components that are being uh, estimated or all the components that are being simulated are being converted using the CEM2 which are being present. So the entire computer modeling of your actual physical setups are being taken into a numerical analysis part of it. So this is something which requires computation time as well as the memory that is being used in the entire solution as possible. So when we talk about the simulation scenario, so as we are talking about earlier, the, when it comes to antenna design or antenna placement analysis, Altifico is one of the major tools that is being used in terms of designing these type of different antenna solutions, which can provide you with various different solvers to solve them in a much more efficient manner. Together, when combined it with Altair Venprop, which is where when you talk about the other external environmental factors, that is where the wave propagation as well as the network planning of different kinds of antenna systems on different types of environment can be analyzed. So when we talk about CEM solver technologies, as we are talking about different uh, kinds of theoretical background that goes into the solutions. So FICO does have different types of solvers. So which is like one set of is called as full wave solutions, which is MOM, which is method of moments, MLF, MM, multi-level fast multipole method, FEM, finite element method, FTTD, finite difference time domain method. All these four solutions are majorly called as the full wave solutions of FICO, and these are physically rigorous solutions. So we were talking about these solutions in the last session where we compared the amount of time as well as the memory that can be these different solutions when it comes to different kinds of applications. So whenever we're choosing an application, it is also important to choose a type of solver to solve that particular application or the complexity of a particular antenna system. So apart from that, when we solve large and complex problems, there are other asymptotic solutions which can help throughout it. So, but when you talk about individual antenna systems, predominantly all your antenna systems can be solved with any of the full wave solutions that is available based upon the type of uh, the application that is going to be present. So additionally, apart from the solver technologies that is available with FICO, there are different other features that is also available with FICO, some of them being optimization, circuit code simulations, parallelizing in terms of high performance computing, and as well as table modeling systems. So specifically, when we talk about full wave solutions, 
as we know, there are the four category, four uh, different types of solvers that is falls under this particular category. So these are more reliable in terms of producing more accurate results. So these can be very much useful in the terms of like in the uh, low frequency as well as in the mid frequency solutions. Whereas when you go for high frequency, anything above the X band or anything above in terms of like higher frequencies, asymptotic solutions are the ones to go for. So specifically, when we talk about solving antenna structures, even it might, might be any kind of like a planar structure or if it might be kind of an array solutions. So FEM and MLFM solutions are very much useful in those cases. So when you have an antenna model, which is consisting of complex dielectrics or in terms of like inhomogeneous solutions, multiple number of dielectrics which are being present. So those solutions can be very much useful for you solved by using FEM and FETD solutions. Apart from that, your regular planar antennas as well as your wire antennas can be solved specifically using MOM and MLFM, which are much more faster because they consume less amount of memory as well as less amount of time in terms of for the surface aligned solutions. So this tabular column is what we saw last time regarding the different forms of method that is available in terms of solving these antenna systems. So predominantly electric fields are getting calculated using the field method and your currents and charges are getting calculated in terms of using your source methods. So your full wave solutions are distant, uh, divided into these two fields as well as the source method, your field methods being your finite element method and your finite difference time domain method as the discretization is purely based upon your volumetric discretizations. So mostly your entire solutions or entire component is discretized into tetrahedrals or watsels, depending upon which other solution you are being used. And second part is you have to introduce an external airbox. Airbox is basically to make sure that your entire component is associated in a particular confined space. And this uh, this usage of this airbox actually applies a specific boundary conditions to your component itself. And when you're using a surface method, which is nothing but your source method, this entire solution, the airbots, uh, the necessity of an airbots is not required as the free space setup is being is solved using your green, greens function, which is being present. And these two, the differentiation between the source method as well as the field method is actually helpful in terms of using at different different applications. For example, any kind of component in terms of your uh, microstrip antenna systems, or it may be your conformal antenna systems, where the complexity is much more in a simpler format, your source methods are very much useful over there. But the same cases when you're going to apply, like uh, for example, in terms of a complex uh, substrate, which is being present in terms of different kinds of layers of a substrate that you're going to use or multiple layers of a substrate you're going to use. So in those cases, FEM and FTTD are much more applicable, applicable or much more appropriate for using those solutions. So when we talk about the antenna systems that is also present, so this is something which uh, which will which is actually helpful in order to understand the different uh, solution methods that can be used for different antenna systems. So one of the things which we discussed last time was like what are the different types of antenna that can be solved under MOM and MLFM solutions. Even though MLFM is considered to be a full wave solution which consumes a lot of hardware resources are computationally hard, uh, computationally much more aggressive. MLFM is also a solution that is known for solving electrically larger structures. So even if your cases of if you're, if you're talking about cases of in terms of like reflector antenna systems or in terms of like a larger array systems, MLFM is much more efficient in those cases also. Apart from that, your, as, as I mentioned, like there are different types of array modeling techniques that are available within FICO, which was discussed in the second session previously. So depending upon the type of application, the choosing of an antenna is very much important. Make sure that you are specifically agreeing to certain kind of threshold limits or certain kind of conditions at those cases. For example, your microstrip antennas can be uh, can be conformed into a different kinds of polarization methods depending upon your feeding techniques and depending upon what type of patches you're going to use. So those specific type of requirements can be applicable for certain kind of applications. So if you talk about certain applications, like for example, a GPS antenna system. So when you talk about a GPS system, it is predominantly it is required to be an omnidirectional system. So omnidirectional system, it is like predominantly it is being using a, a microstrip patch antenna in this particular case. So you can, uh, you can 
you cannot specifically use uh, an antenna system where the beam is much more narrower for an or GPS system because you might lose efficiencies at the other angles or at the other locations which are being present. So those kind of requirements based upon different kinds of concepts or different kinds of applications is very much important in terms of choosing an antenna that is being present. So when we delve into the topic, so let's take a simple example for automotive antennas. So as we are all aware of today, most of the vehicles are being fitted with numerous number of antennas on the entire vehicle system itself. So just if you take a simple uh, vehicle system, just without any smart vehicle systems is being present, it consists of a lot of antennas like LTE systems, your Bluetooth systems, FM radios, which are being present. Some are fitted with GPS solutions are also present. So this actually aids the driver's safety as well as it enhances the driving experience. So that's the need why automotive industry goes into much more making it much more smart and as well as make, making it much more enriched experience for the user itself. So similar to that, Every, every other industry requires different kind of communication equipments or different kind of communication experiments to be added to their particular industry to make it much more efficient in their long run. So some of the major parameters that we take into consideration specifically for automotive antennas is that the gain, the radiation pattern, the reflection coefficient, VSWR, so on and so forth. So when we talk about the automotive antennas itself, just to give a quick example, so these are the different types of antenna systems that you can find in a single vehicle itself. So one of the major thing that we can notice in this particular setup is like there are uh, the frequency ranges from very low frequency in terms of like megahertz region. Also, it goes up to a higher frequency in terms of like 77 gigahertz. So there is a wide range of frequency occupation that is being present within this automotive antenna systems. So and apart from that, you can also notice is that the type of antenna system that is going to be used depending upon the type of radiation that is being present, the directivity that is being present, as well as depending upon what is the usage of the particular antenna that is also being present. So, for example, you can take uh, antenna in terms of remote keyless entry system as well as a tire pressure monitoring system. So these two pretty much work at the same frequency range, which is 315 megahertz or a 413 megahertz. So in this particular case, so there are different requirements of these antenna system to be present. So there are different types of antenna that is being used for each and every component of this particular system. So for a tire pressure monitoring system, predominantly the antenna that is being used is kind of like a bent monopole system, or you can also use a simple uh, strip antenna, which is also being present, or a loop antenna, which is present. Whereas for a remote keyless entry system, it acts predominantly like a sensor. So in those cases, it is being used a ferrite antenna, a ferrite coil, antenna can be used in this particular case. So depending upon the requirement of a system, the type of antenna is also getting changed through on through in and throughout. And uh, of course, the other antenna system which we talked about even in the last session is the collision avoidance radar. So which is basically a microstrip patch antenna array. So working at uh, you can it can either work at 24 gigahertz or it can work on 77 gigahertz. Depending on that requirement, the type of an array system is also getting changed. So that's how important in terms of like choosing a type of antenna for different kind of applications overall in order to better in order to provide a better efficiency throughout the entire system. So just moving on to the uh, actual setup, which is like uh, just quick explanation of different types of antenna, how it is being worked out in FICO. So when we talk about wire antennas, uh, wire antenna is kind of like the basic antenna which is being present. So usually it is present on particular height systems so that it can be present on top of buildings, automobile ships, etc. So all these antennas are actually made into different shapes like straight wires or loops or helix, so on and so forth. So one of the common uh, applications of uh, most of the common applications where wire antennas are being used are like AM broadcasting or maritime radio systems, direction finding antenna systems or telephones, telegraph, ship to coast, ship to aircraft communications, and etc. So most of these application systems are being used. So that's uh, some of the pictures which is being displayed is like some of the antenna systems that are being specifically used in those applications also. So when we talk about analyzing this dipole antenna, so for just to give a quick example, I'm just taking a dipole antenna system into picture. So initially the variables, that is like the components of the antenna system is being fed into the tool itself. So some of them being the variables, that is a working frequency, your lambda solutions, that is like based upon the working frequency, you'll be calculating the lambda solution, and then the height of your dipole models and where the feeding location is being present. So all these components are being present within the solution itself, and then the entire model has been fed into the tool. 
so the construction of a dipole antenna is fairly simple because it's a single wire which is a particular having a particular set of radius that is being present and then the application of voltage sources and the requirement in terms of like far field as well as currents are being pursued for so the results which we are seeing in the bottom is basically for the dipole antenna which would be expecting it is kind of like a more completely omnidirectional uh, pattern and it is also having a figure of eight pattern when it is cut across so this is something which is a simple an analysis which can be directly done in FICO. It is just a quick, uh, it's just a quick solution that can be provided. So apart from that, the analyzing a particular antenna with its surrounding environment is also very much important to make sure that your antenna is having a better efficiency. So always this comes back to the boundary condition what we are talking about earlier in the slides. So by itself an antenna will be emitting certain characteristics which we are aware of. So apart from that we need to understand how does the surrounding medium affect your antenna system. So for in front of a cylindrical which is a completely PEC conducting cylinder you can see that the pattern is completely different, disoriented, which is like it is actually scattering back to the solutions. So that's the reason there is a disorientation in the pattern of your dipole antenna system. And the same thing in front of a spear, yes, again, there is a, a scattering that is happening. That's why there is a uh, the similar pattern is being produced. But again, the focus on in terms of like where the power is getting focused is actually changed. But the same antenna system is being placed in front of a dielectric spear, dielectric dielectric actually sends pass it through. So it goes back to the tangential condition which we are talking about earlier, the tangential of tangential component when it is being perpendicular to the um, metallic or the conducting is zero. So that is something like that's that's how that's where these boundary conditions are getting applied. So this is just a quick example in terms of how different antenna systems or the how this particular dipole antenna array systems can be analyzed to a particular setup. So moving to microstrip antennas, microstrip antenna again, it's actually a simple, this is a, this is a kind of like a most common antenna is a microstrip antenna solutions which are being available. So predominantly it is a simple patch which is being printed on a PCB board, which can be either of a FR4 substrate or different types of substrate materials that is available in particular case. And then again followed by a ground plane, which is again a metallic structure. So the patch and your ground plane is connected through a single uh, radiating element. And again, mostly the common microstrip antennas are being patch antennas and there are different types of patch antennas. The most advantages of these antennas are being relatively inexpensive and it is easier to manufacture and it's having a higher gain when it is being put into an array system. So there are multiple different areas where the patch antennas or the microstrip antennas can be used in terms of it. So mainly because they find a lot of applications in terms of wireless communications. So most of the communication devices or most of the communication equipments will be consisting of microstrip patch antenna. So one of the uh, example which we were talking about earlier is the GPS systems. So GPS systems, again, it requires circularly polarized antenna systems. So that's where microstrip antenna is being used. Again, mainly because it is compact in size and it is very easier to in terms of like manufacturing the particular antenna system. Apart from that, it can also be used in terms of RFIDs. So RFIDs, again, it's a most common application of the, its most wide, widely found application in terms of communication domains or in terms of like industrial domains. So identification using the RFID tag. So currently we are seeing also this pole uh, toll gate tags which are being sold, fast tags. So fast tags is nothing but they use a RFID tag which is present in order to do the identification of the different vehicles that are being available. So this RFID is again is nothing but a microstrip antenna system. So depending upon the application, the type of the structure of the antenna is getting changed. And mobile communication and healthcare also uses the microstrip antenna in different frequencies ranging from 30 hertz to 5.8 gigahertz. So specifically when we talk about the medical application, wearable microstrip antennas are very much suitable for W band, which is nothing but wireless body area network so again mainly because it has a wide gain of 6.7 db and actually a friend to back ratio of 11.7 db and resonates at 2.45 gigahertz so this is very much suitable for telemedicine applications or biomedical applications for in care and apart from that certain specific applications like dedicated short range communications and as well as ymats which is a, which is actually very much useful for larger range of communications and with higher data rate so these are certain areas of applications where microstrip antennas can be used so this specifically because it can resonate more at one frequencies then ymats is much more better application for this particular unit So 
So again, just a quick example of how it is done in FICO. So this is a, again a simple setup that is being followed through the, based upon the different calculations that is available. So the entire uh, module is getting calculated within FICO itself. So one of some of the results which we wanted to talk about is the reflection coefficient uh, that has been uh, generated for this particular antenna system. So one thing also to be noticed when we are designing any antenna system using a simulation tool is that the initially the dimensions that we are getting calculated sometimes might not be exciting the same uh, the frequency that we are wanting it to. So that's the reason why there are different optimization techniques that are also available to solve these solutions. So not depend upon only FICO, any kind of tool will have this optimization setup that can help in making your antenna much more require, I mean, much more confined to your requirements itself. So the other part which we were talking about earlier is like microstrip antennas are actually having the polar, uh, the radiation pattern of a microstrip antenna is pretty much omnidirectional, which can be used in this particular case. So as a result, you can actually design the designing process of a microstrip antenna is also very much simple in terms of using a simulation tool setup. So another quick example is again a circular microstrip patch antenna. So one difference is like the earlier one which we were using is actually using a pin feed, which is nothing but similar to your coaxial feed when you're doing a fabrication or a manufacturing process. And again, the uh, the setup which which we are facing here is actually using an edge feed, which is again, it's much more like uh, you, you are having a microstrip line, which is also present. And this is more of a aperture coupled patch antenna. So in this case, you're not able to see the microstrip line, which is present. Basically, you're just seeing the patch and the micro strip line is present within the substrate which is then connected to the ground so this uh, the strip line is getting activated through the voltage port which is being present so this in causes radiate re-radiating the patch which is present on the top so this kind of like different types of antenna analysis is easily modified using any simulation tool which is available so apart from that, this is something which we were seeing earlier also regarding the antenna array systems. So designing an antenna array systems is also using an internal tool which is being present or you can also use a physical representation of an antenna system that is also present. So the last time what we are talking about the different kinds of like array methods that is available within the tool itself. Some of them being the PBC which is periodic boundary condition which can actually quickly solve any kind of like uh, quickly solve multiple elements of an array system which is also present and apart from that the finite element method which actually helps in solving a single domain of your antenna or element of your antenna system rather than solving your entire array model that is also present. So one other type of antenna which actually we just wanted to talk about is the conformal antenna systems. So as we are aware of conformal antenna is actually a type of phased array antenna. So it's basically it can be any type of elements in terms of like dipole, horn or patch antennas. It is basically you're just taking an antenna which is usually mounted on a flat surface. It can be conformed to any kind of a curved surface. Most of the applications of conformal antenna predominantly lie in terms of like aircrafts or missile systems, but they can also be used in terms of civilian aircrafts, military ships, land vehicles, etc. So the major use of a conformal antenna system is that it has less amount of aerodynamic drag. So whenever you're mounting an antenna which is having a particular height on, a, on systems like a particular example like aircraft systems, so when it is actually moving on a, on a kind of like a weather scenario, it basically has high amount of aerodynamic drag. So using this kind of conformal antenna which is actually confined to a particular surface or it is curved along with the surface, it actually reduces the aerodynamic drag and in turn reducing the I mean, in turn actually increasing your uh, efficiency of the antenna system which is being present so these kind of conformal antennas are typically very much in terms of like niche applications which are being used and this is also typically limited to higher frequencies either in the uhf or the microwave range and then the wavelength of this uh, entire antenna is actually can be reduced to smaller case. So one of the major issue in terms of like conformal antenna system is that when you're confining a particular antennas onto a surface the the actual geometry is getting stretched so that is something which can have a cause and effect into a particular uh, the efficiency or the uh, the uh, the impact of the antenna system itself. So this is something which needs to be taken care in terms of working out a particular system in terms of like showing the efficiency of your antenna in the entire case. So overall, 
just a quick example in terms of like using a conformal patch and an array system using FICO. So this is actually a simulation versus a measurement result where you can actually develop the conformal array modulation within FICO itself. So this is a circular patch which has been designed and further down the line which has been placed or which has been imported onto a curved surface to get it a better more accuracy in this particular case. So apart from that, again, uh, different types of materials, using your materials actually like presenting a particular patch and on top of a surface and then conforming it to that particular setup can act. So this is again a simple example of a different uh, setup which is also present. And then let me quickly shift on yeah. So again, further down the line, what we are going to see is kind of like simulation versus measurement setups of different types of antenna systems that can be modeled within FICO. And uh, as a part of it, I would also like to open the tool and then show you some different setups which can be modified or the process in which the entire tool can be worked upon. So uh, talking about certain different types of uh, application specific antenna designs. So one of them being the dual wide band antenna circular uh, circularly polarized antenna system. So this is nothing but you have a finite ground as well as a metallic metallic plates which are being present and all these uh, plates are actually connected with the shorting pins or in terms of like calling us wires which are being present. So this actually like solved it this can actually help in terms of causing a wide band which is being present. So this is entirely solved between one to two gigahertz and you can now so see that the dual, there is a dual band which is being present at 1.5 and 1.75 gigahertz. So these kind of different solutions can also be solved directly with using an infinite or a finite ground solutions using FICO. And uh, solving the antenna systems over a different, uh, like in terms of like other comp uh, other setups, like in terms of like uh, higher efficiency ferrite meanderline antenna. So this is again a different type of antenna system where you are using a different kind of material setups, which is also being present. So there is a smaller uh, component of ferrite material which is present in this particular case, and then the solution of using a ferrite material in terms of it is like high conductivity that is being explained into this particular part. So this this is mainly used for MIMO communications multiple input multiple output communications predominantly used in terms of like communication industries like uh, in terms of like LTE communication etc and so on and so forth so this is one quick example on that particular front And as we were talking about the printed antennas or microstrip antennas, this is one such example in terms of like printed Yagi antennas. So predominantly most of the Yagi Uda antennas we are seeing in terms of like a simple wire mounted antenna systems, which we'll be talking about. But this is something which is actually printed onto a printed board itself. So one of the major uh, advantage of using a printed Yagi antenna is that it is much more compact in size. And basically it is actually reducing the overall mass that is being present within the antenna system that is available. Uh, but it retains the efficiency of the antenna even though it there are sizes being reduced oops so one other component, so this is nothing but you have, uh, this is kind of similar to a housing system. So this is kind of like an ECU housing system. So where you have three different antennas, which are all dual band inverted F antennas. So this can, this is inverted F antennas are also one of the antennas that can be used in mobile communication applications. So this is something which is very much useful or in terms of like, which can be modified easily. And this can also be worked upon using optimizations so that you can actually vary the modes, the current modes which are being generated you due to this uh, the uh, f antenna the inverted f antenna system which is being present so this is one such case where three different antennas are being also present and in the coupling between the antennas are also can be calculated in this case Apart from that, the fractal antennas are also something which is kind of like a wide range which is being developed in this uh, in the recent or it's been developing for the past few years. So fractal ground as well as the type of different fractal antennas can also be solved using FICO. So this fractal antennas again can work for a very wide band and it can also be in terms of like a dual band antenna system. So this is just a quick example on a dual band with a fractal brace ground plane. So this is simulation versus measurement in that particular front. A 
again, uh, so this is again, so the monopole or the wire antennas, which we are talking about earlier, can uh, again, as we talked about, similar to the Yagyu antenna, this can also be a printed antenna system, which is being present. So this is a dual re resonated, uh, loaded dual bone, uh, dual band uh, WLAN antenna, which is actually present, uh, which is actually using a more printed monopole, which is being present in this particular case. So again, it is, it needs to be having a wide bandwidth and also it is working on dual setups, which is also present. So. So one other most uh, like kind of like an uh, important antenna system which is being present is a reconfigurable antenna systems. So one thing which question we might ask is like FICO as we talked about earlier, it cannot uh, work on active components. So one of the main components that is required for doing a reconfigurable antenna systems are diodes and uh, different kinds of inductors, resistors which have to be placed along with your antenna strip lines itself. So the, the point of replacing these diodes with using your external circuit files, like the pin diodes as well as your uh, the on and off conditions of a pin diode can be easily represented using the SPICE file, which can be directly integrated within FICO in order to solve the entire process of both on and off condition of your pin diode systems. So that is how the reconfigurable antennas can be modeled or modified into FICO itself. So this is one such example that has been performed using FICO, where uh, these components or the components such as inductors and the resistors are being explained. The inductors and resistors or your passive components can be directly represented in FICO using the load systems, whereas your active components like your pin diode is represented using the SPICE file, which can be connected directly into the component systems which is present. Again, this is again a simple other example of where your uh, Yagi antenna is being present, but we are adding more number of di uh, directors or also directors which is present in this particular case. So again, uh, simulation versus measurement, we are always being upon like 90 to 95% in terms of like close to simulation, uh, sorry, measurement results. So this is one such example for in terms of like a narrow beam antenna which is present. So this, the examples in terms of like the uh, the need for showing uh, the simulation versus the measurement results overall for different kinds of antenna systems is very much mainly due to uh, making sure that the user is actually understanding in terms of like uh, this uh, importance of simulation requirements and how it can actually help in solving the different kinds of antenna systems in a much more faster method uh, as well as like helping the user to much more achieve their requirements in a short period of time. So all these data, I can uh, share it across to you guys. So this, this this is something like which can be helpful in terms of understanding the validation of the tool itself in terms of using those for different kinds of antenna systems. Either it might be a planar antenna system or it might be a different combination of setups or an array antenna system overall. Moving to the part, I just wanted to quickly uh, run through the tool itself so that I can actually show the entire solution in terms of it. Just a minute, I'm switching to the tool. I hope you can see my screen. Okay, so this is the GUI of FICO. So basically you have a workspace where you can work upon. So all this time we were talking about the different solvers and different techniques that can be used to solve different antenna model systems. So now we just want to show quickly a few examples so that you can get the hang of like different solutions that can be how easily it can be solved with the tool itself directly. So one of the major thing which I would like to point out is that the recent versions have included the component library, which basically has a set of antenna systems which are predefined. The user can directly use those antenna systems and design it according to their requirement in terms of frequencies. 
So uh, first, initially, I just want to show the entire process and maybe like I can run a few current library analysis in terms of it. So one of them being uh, so what we discussed about is a simple dipole antenna systems. So it is much more easier to design our antenna systems in terms of uh, when you know the variables or the dimensions that are being present. So one week, one quickly set up is that your, for example, a dipole antenna system, you need to aware of the frequency. So in this case, let me take a three gigahertz. So it is being mentioned in terms of like expression is mentioned in terms of three E nine. So E nine representing your frequency of operation, which is like e, e to the power of nine system. So once you add the different variables, why adding the variables is important in the sense it can be easily parameterized. So once you're done with your design and in case if you want to do any optimizations, you don't have to redesign the entire process. You just need to change the parameters that are being present. So as we are aware of uh, uh, for in terms of like a half wavelength dipole, so we will be talking about lambda by two. Uh, the lambda value is something which we need to define. So predefined values are present, which is nothing but C naught, your velocity of light, which is already defined under the variables. I'm just taking directly the particular expression and then dividing by the variable which we have just created, which is frequency equal to three gigahertz. And I'm just going to click on evaluate. So this actually this value shows the uh, calculation for this particular expression that we have calculated. So this is very much important in terms of whenever you are having any kind of equations, you can directly feed it into FICO, making sure that whatever the va variables or values that you are using in the equation is already defined in the variable setups. So one other thing to be noticed is that the unit which we are working on. So depending upon the dimensions, we have to make sure that whichever unit that we are using is actually represented properly. So this is something uh, which we have to make sure in terms of it. And now the actual the value of this particular lambda is somewhere around 0 0.09 meters. So quickly add that. And then the height of the uh, entire dipole, as I mentioned, it's going to be lambda by two. Just mentioning the same expression over here and then click add so the, finally the radius of your dipole or monopole for in that case so i'm just going to create it as 2 mm which is 2e minus 3 and click create so once you have all your variables for your antenna design setups so once you fix those variables then it's been moving on to the construction of the antenna system itself so when you go to the construction there are different options depending upon what type of antenna that you want to use so if you want to create any kind of antenna structures there are predefined options in case if it is not available there are analytical equations that is also present for much more complex antenna systems so for this particular case, it's a simple antenna. So I'm just going to directly use a line segment, which is again similar to wire segments. So I'm just going to mention the starting and the ending point, which nothing but defines the height of your antenna system. So I just mentioned it as H, uh, the ending point. So it's just represents as lambda by two, the entire height of your dipole system. And I'm just click on create. So you can actually see the line segment which is present. So for a dipole, as we are aware of, like we are just going to feed it in the middle. So there are different kinds of ports that is present within FICO. So depending upon how you want to feed your antenna systems, the type of port that can be used for different types of antenna systems. So I'm just going to select the wire antenna and I'm just going to apply a simple wire port and say it is working in the middle. So the next part is again, it's I'm just quickly rushing through tips so that I can show you other types of antenna systems also that can be designed. So the next part is like assigning the voltage source. So I'm just going to give it a one volt, a single volt solutions, and then the frequency of operation. So we have already defined the variable. So I'm just going to use the same variable over here. And finally, the request being the far field, which is nothing but your 3D radiation pattern request, the visualization setup, and then your uh, currents throughout the segments that is how much amount of current is getting carried throughout the wire segments so it is also being created and quickly meshing so meshing which we already talked about discretizing your antenna elements so in this case it is going to be discretized into segments mainly because it is just a simple wire segment that is being present the radius again we're just calling back to the parameter that we have created and i'm just going to quickly mesh it And let me quickly save it. 
And once the mesh is done, it is directly going on to solving your setup. So what does going on in the back end? So one of the major thing which I wanted to showcase this particular scenario is that the solvers, how the solvers are being used. So this particular setup is solved using MOM method of moments of full wave solution, which we were talking about. That's a default solver of FICO. So you do not need to change any settings in case if you want to use MOM. And since it is working, we are just solving it for a single frequency. It is quite faster. So we have already got the results. And depending upon what are the requests that you have created given, so the calculations of those requests are being done. So in order to visualize the results, we are just moving on to post FICO page you for all the post processing steps that is available. So I'm just plotting the currents. There is a current visualization across your segments. So this is something which can be helpful in terms of this, uh, in terms of viewing the setup. And this is very much important in terms of antenna placement analysis, mainly because your surface currents can actually show you how the current accumulation is over a particular object or over the particular surfaces where your antennas are going to be placed. And the second part is you're visualizing your uh, the pattern radiation patterns of your equipment systems. So let me quickly move this. So this I'm also just plotting the same setup in a polar plot just for better visualization. So solving of these kind of simple antennas are much more faster and uh, faster when we are using a simulation tool, especially because like this is kind of like running through the entire process in a much more quicker manner. So this can help in understanding what type of antenna systems that we want to design and in also in turn and also like it can help in terms of fine tuning the antenna design that we are being using. So just quick other uh, other uh, types of results that you can obtain from the simulation tool is actually your reflection coefficient that is being used. So in this case, uh, your reflection coefficient as well as your VSWR values, and apart from that, your impedance admittance values also can be referred to it. So these are some kind of result analysis that can be visualized. Going back to CATFICO, I just want to show the other uh, like different antenna system that can be done. So I'm just quickly going to take a simple spiral antenna, a cavity backed spiral antenna system. And the component library, which can actually very much helpful in terms of solving these kind of solutions, because in case if you're not aware of a particular dimension systems, and if you want to solve it in a much more faster manner, so you can directly use the component library, which is present. So what component library does in the sense, it's basically it creates the entire process. So whatever the process which we followed for creating this monopole antenna, the same thing the component library does, that is by creating your variables and then uh, creating the external, the, the physical pattern of your antenna system. And just opening it in a different file. So it's a simple cavity backed uh, spiral antenna system, which is also being present. Let's quickly give it a run through. So let me reduce the frequency so that it is running quick. So one thing to be noticed is that how the discretization is being done in this particular case. So earlier one, what we saw was like a segment discretization. Now, since it is more much of a surface elements, so most of this, your surfaces are being discretized into triangle elements, which is, which is, uh, which is common for using when we're using MOM as well as MLFM solutions. So once this is getting solved, so as you can see, like it is solving pretty much quickly at even at a range of frequencies that is being done. So I'm just quickly going to open post pico.
So depending upon your hardware computational uh, presence, you can actually speed up as uh, speed up the solutions that are being run through the entire system. So let me quickly open this range. And sorry. So these are the points that are being calculated as of here, and it is still the solution is getting calculated throughout. So as you can see, even the like the requirement uh, is basically like in terms of like a wide band. So this is cavity back patches, cavity back spiral antennas are usually wide band antennas. So you can al already see like within this uh, 2.5 to 3.5. The band is actually already it is in terms of like reflection coefficient is below minus 10. So this is actually working for that entire band. But since for the time being, I just calculated with a very short range of band solutions. And the other part is just the visualization of your far field. That is your. Okay. It's still getting calculated Let me move to this one. So one of the reason main reason for cavity back setup is like to reduce your back lobes. So basically your back lobes is actually like it, it can actually uh, when you're reducing your back lobe, it can actually increase your uh, the gain that is being present in the front lobe also. So one of the common uh, like requirements or common usages in this particular case is like to make sure that your uh, antenna requirements are actually required along with your threshold limits or along with your requirements for a particular specification of application setup. So these are basically the simple uh, like variations that can be done. So the entire band yeah, is already solved. So it analyzes total of about 11 frequencies. So this can actually vary depending upon uh, the in terms of like convergence that is going on in the back end, the mathematical equation that is going on in the back end. So based on the convergence, it can solve multiple number of iterations. You can actually use it can reduce the number of iterations that it requires to be solved or they can increase the number of iterations also. So these are some of the like kind of example solutions that can be done easily using a simulation tool in terms of working upon it. So one other thing why variables are being important, as I said earlier, optimizing your design can be easily done with when you are having a particular variable system that is being present. So this entire model is actually de uh, designed based upon these variables. So entire is like parametrically dependent. So as I was talking about earlier, FICO has inbuilt optimization tools as well as inbuilt parametric sweep tools. So this can actually help in designing or in terms of like fine tuning your model further down the line. So for example, if I'm just going to select the diameter out inner diameter of your cavity, which is being present. So I'm just changing it uh, from 0 0.0008 to 0 0.006. And the maximum is going to about 0 0.001. And let's say I'm taking four samples between them. So it automatically creates a parametric sweep folder. Basically, it runs in the back end of different combinations or different uh, iterations of all these antenna systems that are being present. So once you're all different variables are being accessed to the system, it basically solves the entire process for different variables. So it creates a kind of like a backup model. So which you can use in terms of like any times if you want to go for a different model solutions. So let me quickly open that. So this is where all your models are being stored. So as you can see, like based upon as I gave like four types of samples, it creates four different models along with the original model. So it is basically you can choose uh, like different models once it is finished running for the entire setup.
So once the uh, so basically uh, totally four analysis, so it's almost complete. So once the, all the analysis are done, it basically asks to compile the results. So why parametric sweep can be helpful in the sense when you're designing your antenna systems. So you uh, analyzing what type of parameter can be useful or what type of parameter has how much amount of influence on your antenna design is very much important to make sure that your antenna is much more efficient. So parametric sweep can help in understanding what are the different parameters that can have those influences on the entire antenna system itself. Okay, uh, yeah, I think I made a mistake. I gave a range of frequencies, so it is taking more time. Let me quickly stop this. And let me say, remove this range. And I'm going to solve it only for single frequencies due to time requirements. And let's quickly save this and rerun the script. So I'm just going to choose the same parameter and I'm going to say this is work from six and this is sorry, this is zero to one. And let's say five samples next. Yes. So in the meantime, I can also show the other optimization that is available. So basically, uh, there are other optimization methods which is available within FICO. So this is one such method. So once you create the type, so yeah, let me click on that. Yeah. So these are the other different methods which we are talking about in our last session. So basically, genetic algorithm method or particle swarm algorithm method, which are being present. So instead of if we want to get an optimal result, then you can go for optimization setup, which is also present. So instead of going up for a parametric sweep, you can go for an optimization setup where the tool actually suggests you, depending upon what is the request that you are given, it will give you an optimum design for that particular request. Yes, so the results are complete. So just asking for like merging all the results together. So when I say yes, it actually moves into post people. This is the second part of the script where entire post processing is being done. So it is just asking to compile all the results together. Let me directly pull it. So uh, it's a minute change since we do not change like a huge difference for the entire antenna system. So, but when I'm moving from one to another antenna system, you can actually see the changes, a little bit of change in the inner diameter that is being present. So let me quickly plot some of them. So we can just see a quick uh, differentiations. So 
So this is for three different values of the inner diameter that is being present, even though the difference is not huge, but when you are changing the diameter or the parameters to a much more larger extent, you can actually see much more difference. Even with the small minute changes, you can actually see it is varying from 15.9 to 16.3, 16.4. So this is something which you can which can actually help in terms of fine tuning any kind of antenna design that is being done. So this is for overall uh, for today's session. So I can actually share uh, the details of for the different antenna models that we have worked on. So in case if you have any further questions, we can take it up. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sandhya, madam, for your nice presentation and also uh, demonstrating the tool for various uh, uh, various examples. Uh, there are some questions. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. C.J. Reddy sir has already answered Professor Raghavan's uh, questions and uh, some of them I'll just read it out. Sure, sir. And thank you, C.J. for uh, being there. Problem from the rear. Uh, yeah, so in parametric sweep, uh, can we see or choose the iterations while the solver is running? Uh, while the solver is running, we cannot choose the number of iterations, mainly because it is running as a backend batch script. So once it starts, it is something like you can complete it only after it ends. So during the running of the solver, we cannot choose the number of iterations. Okay, thank you. And uh, one more question is, can you kindly inform the exclusive numerical technique that is adopted in Altair FICO? I think uh, not the only one technique. Maybe you can answer better, madam. Uh, so exclusive uh, numerical technique as in like uh, the solution methods which we are yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 maybe that is the question. Yeah, so let me go back to the slides. Uh, yep. So yeah, so there are different kinds of like solver techniques that are being used within FICO itself. So this is something like depending upon uh, the solution setup, what we're talking about earlier. So all your full wave solutions are predominantly based upon your Maxwell's equations. So MOM being the heart of FICO, that is like it is a default solver that FICO uses. It is much more based upon your source method that is discretizing depending upon the current discretization and then uh, then your field discretizations. So this is something like it depends upon. Uh, Again, uh, the, there are different types of numerical techniques that are being used. Again, MLFM is multi-level fast multipole method. It is again a derivated method from MOM, but actually it uses a kind of technique which we generally call as Botzing algorithm. It kind of groups different uh, like uh, different sets of parameters together so that the number of iterations are basically reduced. So this is something which is very much useful in terms of solving a larger problem. So that's why you can see MLFM is kind of in the middle uh, in terms of like both electrical size as well as the complexity of your materials. And FEM and FTTD, both of them being volumetric equations. So these are pretty much very much useful in terms of like, as we said, like inhomogeneous materials. So when you add more complexity to the material characterizations that are being present, so mostly in terms of biomedical applications, so these are very much useful to solve those materials much more faster, mainly because these are volumetric equations and the equation itself is based upon these kind of is, is very much useful for solving these kind of specific problems and when we talk about much more larger solutions like for example uh, mostly uh, the asymptotic solutions are used in placement analysis or rcs analysis and very much less in terms of antenna design uh, or specifically like antenna design or array designs but uh, most of your asymptotic solutions like po which is physical optics rlgu relaunching geometrical optics utd uniform theory of diffractions so these are predominantly based upon your ray tracing ray launching methods the rlgu is basically ray launching geometrical optics which is purely depending upon how does your incident ray or incident angle hits a particular surface and how does it scatters back or how does it is getting uh, diffracted, refracted. So those principles are very much keen in terms of solving those principles. So it's always like the numerical solutions are pretty much like common in terms of like any type of tool that you're taking. All these solutions are basically the same solutions that are being used, only the names, how the implementation of those solution is what varies. So 
any kind of like for example like last time one of the user was talking about the mol which is method of lines so these kind of like these solutions can be like there will be points of those solutions which will be used in terms of like uh, the entire solver itself but the basics are these similar solutions what are the equations which we talk about in the theoretical aspects of it Thank you, madam. And uh, one more question is uh, on metametrial antennas so that is using split ring resonators. Yes. Uh, which solver uh, can we just comment on that? So, uh, metamaterials, yes. Uh, so, again, it depends upon. Uh, so, if you're just going for a single analysis, just the uh, SRR analysis, split ring resonators, only the initial part of just repeating those structures, periodic structures, and if you're doing the analysis, then definitely you can run it with MOM, MLF, many type of solutions. Again, uh, when you're adding multiple layers, then FEM would be a better option, but ML MOM and MLF would always be uh, better options for initially all the antenna designs or all the antenna analysis itself. So especially for meta materials, we have we have been using MLF and MOM depending upon where the frequency is being placed upon. So uh, one of the example which we showed last time with the FSS structures for uh, this Jerusalem cross, which is basically again using PBC condition. So that is also initially maybe your a single element of your SRR can be analyzed using PBC to see how it works. And PBC condition is also working along with this transmission reflection coefficient in FICO, which can help in understanding the reflections that are being present or reflections that can be emitted from that particular material that you're developing it. So these are like few components of few sets that you can use in terms of analyzing it but specifically when talking about solver mom and mlfm should do the trick yeah thank you madam thank you very much uh, so i think i don't think any questions are there and uh, uh, yeah one more question has come up uh, can you show how antenna array uh, can be constructed uh, yeah i can quickly uh, show one setup so i think uh, so do we have time uh, maybe uh, five yeah, yeah, yeah we can we can, can go ahead no problem sure. Yes, sir. So let me just take a simple uh, setup or yeah, let me go with a simple dipole for the case of it. And let's say it works at uh, 1.5 gigahertz. And uh, let me move this and say it is working for single frequency. So uh, again, that's the same construction what we talked about earlier. So I'm just using the component library to save time. So as we talked about earlier, the dimensions of different variables, the entire parameters, entire antenna system is being constructed using the variables itself. And uh, so for arrays, as we talked about earlier, there are different methods within FICO. So one of them being the periodic boundaries. So once you assign a particular boundary for your array systems, so I'm, I'm just going to simply show a setup. Oops. I have to manually enter it. Okay. Let me take. So basically for PBC condition, you're just constructing a boundary along with your unit cell. So basically explaining what is the distance between your uh, like individual element system which are being present. So once you specify the boundary that is being present, so it automatically takes that into consideration when it is considering infinite number of elements that is also being present. So this is one condition where uh, you can apply the PBC to solve it much more faster. And apart from that, you can also use a direct presence, which is cleaner or planar antenna array system. System, which is this which is which is basically like explaining how many number of elements you have in different axes and what is the distance between those elements that is being present so i'll just use this one for a quick uh, representation so you don't have to create a multiple number of ports when you're using this method because it is just going to create it automatically and let me say it is five elements five cross five uh, this case and the distance between them. Uh, so I'm just not using the calculated values. I'm just using rough values for this particular setup. Uh, 
again, this is a this is again a quicker method of solving uh, your system rather than having physically creating the antenna arrays. So let me just going to click create. Okay. So apart from that, one other thing which I wanted to show is that there is an option where you can actually specify the distribution that is your magnitude as well as the phase offset between the arrays. So why this is important in the sense when it comes to antenna array systems, you can actually depending upon your requirement, you will have certain restrictions like uh, reducing the side lobe levels to certain extent, or you have a particular side lobe level or grading lobe level that you want to achieve or the gain that you want to achieve. In order to achieve those gain and side lobes, you have to use different kind of feeding or the uh, the magnitude that is being fed into the systems, like Taylor's or uh, Taylor method, Taylor discretization setup. So those feeding values can be directly used in this particular setup. You can just import the values uh, by using an Excel sheet or any text file. So once you apply it, then it will not be a uniform feeding. It will be depending upon what type of feeding technique that you want to use. So, but just for this case, I'm just going with to, with a uniform feeding setup. So basically it creates a linear array. So this is nothing but the entire calculation is depending upon this single element, which has already been created. But just as a physical representation, you have all the other elements, which is also being present. And you can also customize this array. So you can just go and say like convert to custom array. So then if you want to remove certain elements, especially for custom antenna array systems, you can actually use this custom antenna array element and then remove those elements to see how does it affect your entire system. So for this case, I'm just going to keep all the 25 elements and let's go to the configuration. So I'm just going to see the far field, nothing much. And uh, let me quickly give a mesh. So the radius, I have not changed any other parameters. The radius and everything is depending upon whatever the dimensions that we have given earlier when the creation is being present. And let me quickly run it. Let me save this. Again, uh, one thing to be noted is that this is a simple setup. So this is a, just since it's a simple dipole antenna, it is much more quicker. So this can be applied for any type of antenna systems. And again, we are just solving it for a single frequency. So it, the, the, I mean, depending upon how many number of frequencies you're going to solve, the time is going to mount upon that. But anyway, like for these kind of simple antenna systems, it will be much more quicker. So you have all your uh, 25 elements which are being present. And let me quickly plot them. Uh, first one, yeah, let's go for 3D view. So again, uh, for the, this is, uh, let's take. So for individual antenna elements, so this is something which can be helpful in terms of like seeing the coupling between the antenna elements. So this is one setup. So you can also raise a request called as S parameter request, which basically you can. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, if you're doing a physical antenna system, you can actually you'll be uh, seeing different ports of all your 25 elements and you can see like which element you want to active and which element you want to keep it off condition. So it's kind of like customizing your antenna array. So that is something which you can actually export into an SMP file in terms of further usage. So these are some of the methods that you can actually use apart from physically constructing individual element in an array system. So one is PBZ condition, other is a DGFM setup. So as we talked about uh, in the last session, so basically there are two options that is available, either to activate and deactivate the coupling between the elements. So this is something you can choose between your solver settings. Currently the coupling is activated. So the coupling between the elements are being shown in this particular case. I mean, being taken into account in this particular case. So yeah, it's a quick representation, uh, but can be done for any type of antenna models that you want to bring it into account. So one other thing is like, even if you're not able to construct your own antenna model, if the dimensions are not available, or if in case, if you have a predefined model, you can directly import any of those geometries or any of those measures into FICO directly. And there are multiple options to do that. So it can be easily done in terms of like any format that you want to use it. I hope uh, that explains uh, to some yeah, yeah. extent. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra, madam. Uh, uh, next, uh, Dr. C. Reddy, sir, can you uh, 
Okay. Uh, do you have some comments on this? Yes, yes. Um, my also from my side on that, I think very nice presentation. Um, I have seen some of the things that um, I've not seen before in terms of the examples you presented, as well as even the graphical interface. Uh, we have such a nice graphical interface with a lot of features in it. Even the the finite array tool that you showed, uh, I've not used it myself. But I just want to add to that um, for array configurations. Apart from the choices that Soundary showed, in 2021, the recent uh, version that we released, uh, we have, yeah, that's one, I guess. Uh, we also added this uh, new tool as part of the installation where you can have not only the, you know, the array, but also can choose the different uh, distributions like a cosine distribution or the triangular distribution. So it's very, very user-friendly. Like I, one of the features I like there is this particular one where you can create um, arrays very quickly without them. I mean, you can do 100 by 100 or 1,000 by 1,000. It's all done in very uh, quick manner. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much, Sandhya, for a nice presentation. I enjoyed it myself. And I'm sure the thank audience you, um, also you know, appreciate the um, presentation. Thank you, CG. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, compliments from audiences uh, for your knowledge and your nice presentation, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Just one, maybe one more comment from my side. Uh, yes, sir. Mahesh, I think if I can make. I know Dr. Yes, Raghavan asked in the, or maybe a question or about yeah. Soundarya, whether she learned from the school or <laughs> yeah, she learned yeah. through training. <laughs> yes, I know yes, Soundarya yes. from, I think, 19, 2017, I guess, uh, Soundarya. Yeah, 2016, in, uh, yes. 2016. Um, when I was uh, met her, you know, I was told she's a bachelor's degree. Um, you know, she did not do master's and those kind of things, which we normally expect uh, from people with, you know, this kind of experience. But I'm very impressed that she picked up all the things that, um, I know some of the, I mean, I mean, I don't have to say this, I guess, from the presentation you can see that she's very thorough yes yes and, yes um, she gained a lot of knowledge through the yes by her own um, hard work um, yes because uh, this is something Thank i you, tell <laughs> it is all is uh, that... it's all up to i mean it's it uh, the compliment goes to the entire team itself so you have actually taught sure. me a lot so thanks for that sure, sure. But at the same Thank time you. as Thank i tell you. you know many students also is that there is something about, you know, you know, you study and then you pass the exams and that's one thing. Other thing is you put your mind and uh, do a lot of hard work. I mean, yes, the yes. first thing is very important, I guess, that you have to put your mind and have what I call intellectual curiosity about these things. Then, you yes. know, everything else becomes simple and becomes you get interested. Uh, without yes. that, you know, how much our hard work you put, it's all, you know, will be very difficult to learn. The learning, the first step is to have the intellectual curiosity and uh, go after it, I guess. So. And probably that's what Soundarya did, and we can see the results. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for your kind words, CJ. It, I'm fortunate enough to have you as my mentor. And uh, last uh, during the last session, some of them asked about the uh, link for in terms of downloading yeah. the edition. So I just wanted to just display it so that they can quickly note it down or just to take a screenshot of it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kirti Premadam, can we uh, close? Uh, you have some sure. questions to ask? Uh, no, sir. We can close it. Uh, no more questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Siddharth Desa, for joining. Thank you, Soundara, Madam, for your presentation. And thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Yeah. So we'll close the session. Bye, everyone. Tomorrow we'll join at 6.30. We'll hear from uh, Dr. Uh, Devdeep Sarkar uh, regarding uh, uh, what is research and what how it is important for students. And followed by uh, Ashutesh Kedar, sir, on uh, Saturday regarding uh, IEEE authorship how to write papers and how, when you get comments, how to answer all those things. Thank you, Varun, for attending the session. Uh, good night. Bye.